Welcome to 28storms.com on this June 1st, 2011, the first day of the Atlantic hurricane season. We already have a lot of tropical news to discuss, but before we get into that, I would just like to say that hopefully everyone that's been viewing the webpage over the last couple of weeks and the past several months has taken advantage or has had at least some use for our severe weather coverage. Obviously, it's been a very deadly severe weather season across the United States and just hopefully we have at least made some type of impact and have given at least some people an advance warning ahead of some dangerous storms across the nation over this past severe weather season. Now before I get into what is currently happening in the Atlantic tropics, I would like to first turn people's attention toward the 2011 hurricane season forecast produced exclusively by 28storms.com. You can easily access the forecast by going to 28storms.com slash 2011 and there you will find a detailed analysis of all the main parameters that affects the seasonal activity and possibly even the overall or general storm tracks that may occur over the summer months. And like we said in the forecast, we cannot tell you exactly where a storm is going to make landfall, but we do feel that there is enough evidence to possibly outline some of the areas that have an elevated risk of hurricane landfalls over the upcoming season. So hopefully you will find some use in that forecast and we'll see how things turn out over the course of the season. Now turning toward what is currently happening, we already have two areas worth monitoring for potential development and these are the two areas outlined by the National Hurricane Center. We have a weak tropical disturbance now passing over the Florida Peninsula. They give that area about a 20% chance of formation over the next day or so. And we also have a secondary area of the, over the Southwest Caribbean that has a 10% shot at development. And both of these areas have persisted for the past several several days so therefore you know these really are areas to monitor now the tropical disturbance that's currently over Florida makes the transition from severe weather to hurricane coverage very easy and I will explain that as we start to look at this satellite animation that has shown what has gone on over the past several days and if you go ahead and look at the first few frames you see that there was a mesoscale convective com complex that developed over the Great Lakes and upper and Midwest and actually several days ago it produced a lot of severe weather and damaging wind reports because it was actually a long-lived duration and it had actually passed over the Chicago area producing several wind damage reports and if you follow its progression as the loop starts over you'll note that it went all the way into the northeast and then it emerged near Long Island before continuing to turn toward the south and at the end of that satellite image you'll notice that it's turning back toward the Florida Peninsula and that's where we are today. Here is a more recent satellite visible animation of the disturbance passing over Florida and as you can see there is a weak low level spin associated with this tropical disturbance however if you look at the latest uh, surface observations there really isn't a very well defined surface circulation and here's a quick look at the latest enhanced infrared and yeah, it's not the, the most well-defined system. We do have some persistent convection, but the cloud tops aren't extremely impressive just yet. We do have a little flare up a little ahead of the low-level circulation near the west coast of Florida, but again, nothing too impressive just yet. So what can we expect from this storm system over the next 48 hours? Well, this is the latest water vapor imagery, and this helps us define the areas that are causing the storm to move the way it is and in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere we currently have an area of strong upper level heights over the southeast and that's the main steering parameter that forced this system to exit the northeast and over the last 48 hours it's been turning southwest around this area of strong upper level ridging and this is going to be the same general pattern over the next 72 hours so we can anticipate that the overall steering will remain the same with a west southwest trajectory into the central gulf of mexico and over the next 48 hours it should be south of mississippi and alabama but with time we'll probably start to see more of a northerly component as it makes it around the western periphery of the subtropical ridge and the end game will most likely result in this system moving into Texas, possibly coastal Louisiana. And we don't really expect much from this system, uh, but it, it, it's, it's still something to watch. There's always a slim chance of this becoming a weak depression or a tropical storm. Either way, this is going to be good news if it makes it into Texas because obviously we've had a lot of drought conditions there over the last several months, and they definitely need the rainfall. Obviously, if this goes into southeast Louisiana, that would not be the best solution. They do need a lot of rainfall, but at the same time, there's a lot of river flooding in the towns just west of New Orleans. So we don't want to add to the 
add, add to their problems in that particular region. Now, further to the south, in the southwest Caribbean, we have a large disorganized mass of convection, and this has been fairly persistent for the last three or four days. And it looks a little bit healthier today, although we're still not expecting much in the way of development in the near future, and I'll explain why in a moment. But as you can see, there is a lot of convection. If anything, there is a low-level circulation trying to get going east of Honduras and Nicaragua in this general area. But as you can see, the primary amount of convection has been elongated and stretched out to the northeast of the low-level circulation. And here's the latest look at the enhanced infrared. And some of our coldest, coldest cloud tops are near Jamaica. And again, if you want to look for signs of intensification or organization, you would like to see this convection be a little bit more to the southwest, closer to your actual low pressure center. Now, what's the reason for the convection being that far away? Well, we have this upper level trough that's currently situated near Cuba, and there's an upper level low over the southeast Gulf of Mexico, and to the southeast of that upper level low, we have strong southwest winds aloft, and that that amounts to very strong wind shear in excess of 50 to 70 knots across much of the Caribbean Sea and this is not a favorable pattern for any type of tropical development. With all that being said though there are several dynamical models that like to show the conditions becoming better for tropical cyclone formation over the coming week and just for example this is the afternoon run of the Canadian forecast model and this is the current time and this is the Southwest Caribbean, so this is the area that we would be looking for for any type of tropical cyclone formation. And as I set this in motion, the forecast calls for development of a surface low and a major hurricane if you take this model seriously. But I do have good news. The Canadian model is always by far the most aggressive model, and it's always too aggressive, and it likes to develop way too many tropical cyclones with every passing season. So I'm not terribly concerned just yet. Now, a much more reasonable computer forecast has originated from the GFS model, and as we set this forecast in motion, it still develops this area into a more well-defined low-pressure system by the 5 to 7 day range, and if you take this model seriously, by around 5 to 7 days, we could be talking about a tropical storm just off the coast of Honduras. So we'll just have to wait and see how things pan out. Obviously, this is going to be a slowly evolving storm. It's not going to do a whole lot over the next 72 to 96 hours. If this were to develop, it would more than likely do so toward the end of the week, possibly into next weekend. And it could still be in the Caribbean at that time. So we still have a lot of time to monitor this. And the upper level conditions will be very slow to improve, if they will at all. So we have plenty of time to monitor the changes going on down there. So thanks for checking out the website, 28storms.com. I will admit that this particular video was rushed a little, but do expect to come back to 28storms.com to see more extensive and more detailed tropical video updates over the coming days. We're going to try to make it a habit to at least post one per day, and we'll try to keep this up throughout the season. And spread the word about 28storms.com to anyone that is interested in extensive tropical weather coverage. And we'll also try to continue to update the severe weather information as much as possible. So again, thank you for checking us out. And don't forget to check out the 2011 hurricane season forecast produced exclusively by 28storms.com. So go ahead and check that out. Thanks for stopping by.